Hello everybody and welcome to the third lesson on the organisation of the human body. In order to complete this lesson you're going to need a book, a pen and a worksheet which you can download in the description below for free. In your books I'd like to write down today's title which is movement, joints and for your starter activity I'd like to write down which of these four joints is the odd one out and why. Now there's more than one answer to this so if you get something different to me I'd like to know about it in the comments below. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock. If you need more time pause the video and then we'll go through it together. Okay, are we all finished? Well done if you've identified this first one as the elbow joint. This is an example of a hinge joint. This one here is the hand, and I'm more interested in the joints in the fingers rather than the knuckle, because these are also examples of hinge joints. This one here, this is where the femur attaches to the pelvis, and it is the example of a ball and socket joint. And then right at the end there, you can see it's got another little bone right in front of it, the patella, that's the kneecap, and the knee is another example of a hinge joint. So my odd one out is this one here, because it is a ball and socket joint. Now in today's lesson, what we're gonna do is we're gonna describe the different joints of the body and give examples of each. We're gonna label the structure of a knee joint and we're gonna look at some data for an investigation to determine the strength of the triceps and the biceps. The joint with the largest range of movement is the ball and socket joint. And this can be found in the shoulder, and in the hip. Similar to a door hinge, we have the hinge joint, but it's only got a limited range of motion. Door hinges move like this, it swings open, and it swings back in. These joints only have the same degree of motion as that hinge, and they can be found in the knee, the elbow, and the fingers. You then have fixed joints, and they have no range of motion, and they're required to hold bones together, and these joints are located on the skull. So what I want you to do is unscramble three sentences to reveal facts about your joints. Now there's some clues here. Remember, every sentence begins with a capital letter and ends in a full stop. I'm gonna put five seconds on the clock, if you need more time, pause the video, and when you're finished, we'll go through it together. Okay, are we finished? So, I'd like to correct your own answers if you made any mistakes, but what we should have is the ball and socket joint has the largest range of motion and is found in the shoulders and the hips. The hinge joints can only move along a single axis and can be found in the knee and the elbow. Fixed joints don't move at all and are located on the skull. Okay, so we've described the different joints of the body and we've given some examples of each. What I'd like you to do next is to use the clues on the board here in order to label your knee joint worksheet. And I only want you to label the arrows with the words that are in red. All these are just clues to try and get you to put them in the correct place. So let's have a look at this ligament section. It says ligaments connect bone to other bones. If I look on my diagram, I see a bone there, I can see a bone down there. Is there something connecting the two? Hey, maybe that one there, that could be our ligament. So use the clues in order to correctly label your knee joint. I'm gonna put five seconds on the clock. If you need more time, pause your video, and then we'll go through it together. Are we all done? So what I'd like to do is give yourself a tick for all the ones you got right and make any corrections that you need to make. So up here we've got the muscle, it's connected to the bone, it's gonna be pulling them in all different directions. You've got the bone in the top of the leg here, that's the femur. You've then got the synovial fluid, which helps reduce the amount of friction within the joint. You've then got the bone at the bottom, that's our tibia. Starting at the top, we've got something that's connecting the muscle to a bone, that's a tendon. You've then got the kneecap or the patella, You've then got the cartilage on the end of the bone that's also there to prevent the amount of friction within the joint. We've got this here as well, which we said connects the bone to the other bone, and that's a ligament. So we've labeled the structure of the knee joint. Now we're gonna look at some data to determine the strength of the triceps and the biceps. So a student has carried out an investigation to determine the force of some of the muscles around their joints. First, they pushed down on a set of scales and they recorded their results in a table. So by pushing down, they generated a force of 48.5 newtons. Next, the student put the scales under the table and pushed up, and then they recorded their results in the same table. For their last part of the experiment, they got the scales and they squeezed it, and then they recorded that result in the table. Okay, so what I want you to do now is analyze the results from this investigation. I want you to use the data in the table to complete these three sentences. 
If you need a bit more of a challenge, I'd also like to know what changes you can make to this investigation to make this data more reliable. I'm gonna put five seconds on the clock. If you need more time, pause the video, and when you're finished, we'll go through it together. Okay, are we all done? So let's complete these three sentences together. The most force was applied when the student was pushing down. You can see it's got the most force generated at 48.5 Newtons. The independent variable, so the thing that we changed, in this case is the muscles that the student was using. The dependent variable, these are the things that we measure. And in this experiment, we measured the force. For this challenge, what changes you can make to make the investigation more reliable I'd like to put that down in the comments below. Okay, so now we've looked at some data to determine the strength of the triceps when we were pushing down on the scale, the biceps when we were pushing up, and also the muscles of the forearm when we were squeezing. Okay, we've got one more thing to do before we wrap this lesson up, and you get to choose what you do. You can either write a tweet, 140 characters max, and you can hashtag keywords. You can write down two correct statements and one incorrect statement about what you've learned today, or you can draw the most important thing that you've learned today. I hope you've had a great lesson and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the lesson. If you found it useful, don't forget to press the like button and why don't you subscribe and press the bell icon as well so you know when the next lesson's available. You can also support me on Patreon and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and I appreciate all the support. And I'll see you next time.